Welcome back on our episode of NBA 2K12. In this video, we're going to be doing another episode of the Choose Your Team series. Last episode, we're fresh up the Memphis Grizzlies, Mike Conley so violent and dominance. So now, we're going to be we come the next game. We're going to be down to the 18th left of the season. So now, which next team will find out? It will be the spin the wheel. Let's see who will they give. Which team will give him to? Spin the wheel, who will the next team? It is the Detroit Pistons. I saw the Detroit team, the Detroit Tigers, Detroit Lions. It's going to be interesting. So we have the rival Indiana Pacers, but check out the post array. So we have the Pistons and Pacers. It's going to be a tough one here in the Central Rivals. And hope you enjoyed this video. I will catch you up. We'll see you after this and we'll be right back. And enjoy the video for our four team, Peshawn Prince and the Detroit Pistons. Enjoy. Welcome to 2K Sports in the NBA. I'm your host, Damon Bruce. Saturday in the NBA. It's going to be the Indiana Pacers up against the Detroit Pistons. And things are about ready, so let's head on out to Kevin Clark and Steve for the call in Detroit. It's an Eastern Conference showdown. It's the Indiana Pacers coming to town for this one. Thank you for being with us. 2K Sports brings you the NBA Live this Saturday afternoon with Clark Kellogg and Steve Kerr. This is Kevin Hart. Let's check out Indiana's starting lineup. Paul George and Danny Granger on the perimeter. West out there with Roy Hibbert and it's Hill at the point. And for the Pistons, Prince and Yurette are the forwards. Ben Gordon out there with Rodney Stuck and it's Wallace in center. Well, it was a, a terrible season for Detroit this season ago. The lone bright spot was they actually fared pretty well at home, finishing 21 and 20 in Detroit. Jill kicks to Granger. Prince against Hibbert. Six to shoot. Granger, good. Well, for the Pistons, as you said, Steve, even just finishing with those 21 wins, you know, Clark is something to build upon. Yeah, it is something to build upon. And when you've got a team that's in transition, that's in limbo phase right now, you got to try to hang your hat on some of those positive things. And that the 500 record at home is certainly one of those. And you always start when you're building a team and your culture and identity is, let's take care of the home court. Very nice. He planted himself in the path of the inside-out pass and pilfered. And let's get this update now from Doris Burke, who's a comfortable way on the side. Earlier I spoke with Frank Vogel. He told me that he really wants his team to be aggressive on the defensive side. simple the fewer points you allow the fewer you have to score for yourself i mean that's elementary yeah and particularly in this game i think it makes sense i mean establish the defense end of the floor and try to convert some buckets to the transition off the defense and try to take control of the game well tishon prince was once a lockdown defender but he sustained some back injuries over time and that slowed him down a little bit but he's still a very effective player west picks him up Here's the three. That's good. Three straight outs to start this game. Looking great. So it's in the end. Talking about Prince. Even those injuries you mentioned. He's had that incredible reach. Working for him defensively. Well, the wingspan of a condo, I call it. <laughs> and clearly that is always going to be there. It's not going away. He may get a little slower, but he will always be long. And that's a useful attribute to have defensively. And a change here for the Pacers. Hansborough is checked in. Danny Granger, um, Kevin, grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, and after Hurricane Katrina, as you might imagine, he did a lot to help that town and also his family in Orleans, too. Well, now, I take some drinks. Which is a three. That's Danny Granger with the three. Granger's got 11 points. Going back to Danny Granger, Steve, he moved about 17 of his family members up to Indiana. 
Got anything else? Moved in with him? <laughs> wow. Prince dishes the goal. And the three ball is good. He has set up. He three points back in the hurry. Yeah, they sure did. It didn't take them long at all to respond. There's Prince. Good. I think they're all ahead now about this point. The score is down to the penalty. Well, they got to stop the lead and put the tourniquet on, and it's even tough to play straight up. So the Pacers call timeout their first of the game. Well, you really have to say the Pacers took a step forward last season. I mean, they did improve their road record by four wins up to 13 and 28 compared to the season before. A different look for Detroit. Wade Monroe, he checked in for Uret. And it's Bynum in for Rodney Stuckey. Here's Ranger. He's got 11. Back and down is Hibbert. Goes straight up. Soft touch off the glass. Mark, you talk about 13 and 28 road record for the Pacers. Tied for the ninth worst in the league. I hate to bring them up since the the games. Uh, Steve, not what you would expect from the playoff team. Well, he's probably going to roll offensively. That in the average to that same points at home when they did on the road. And I was impressed with what they did late in the season under Frank Vogel. If they can carry some of that momentum into this year, I think the Pacers can be much improved. Here's Prince. That's in. Coming off the assist from Bynum. Prince has got two points. Here's Hill. And again, it's Indiana converting. Well, he knows his role, he embraces it, and he's really a guy that you can go to offensively. And outside, another three for the three. Another open look, quick pattern from outside. That's three of the last five minutes from beyond the arc. And here's Hill for three, and the Pacers another three. I like that. Run to the three-point line, find a wide-open shot. Prince backing him down. Wings are covering. On loads. And the Pistons getting another bucket right there. Both sides really coming out of the gate fire. The guys didn't look like they were wearing the goal in this one. A lot of offense early on, right? Pistons leading by four. And here is Bynum, Prince, Ranger covering. Here's Prince, stolen by George. He wasn't paying any attention to the defense. Poor pass there. Monroe, the pass to Prince. Wallace against Granger. Granger knocks it away. Now Hill. Here's Hansbrough. Good, the assist goes to Hill. Hill's got three assists now in this one. Not loose and stolen by Granger. Nice his first quarter of play. We've seen plenty of offense so far. Pistons lead by two. Boy, a ton of And so far, it's been a closely contested game as we get the second quarter up and going. Here is Bynum. And what I love about Danny Granger is he's really good at both ends of the floor. A versatile defender, the rebound, and of course, offensive. He's done in. In a moment now, reset the lineups, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up for the second quarter of basketball. On the court for Indiana, Paul George is out there with George Hill. Then there's Amundsen, then there's James Posey, and it's West in at the foul. You know, the one thing that's helped Danny Granger back early in his career was that surgery as you could use. Last season, I thought he was pretty healthy, and he carried the burden for the Pacers offensively. If he can get a little help in that area, though, I think it will serve him very well. From the sideline, let's catch up with Doris Burke. Well, guys, Roy Hibbert had a great start to last season. He lost a bunch of weight and addressed an undiagnosed asthma issue. Hibbert the Pacers get. They're hoping he can get the right balance to reach his potential. I think so, Doris. He 
showing the work ethic. And I agree with you, Kevin. I mean, he's made so much progress physically since arriving at Georgetown. You've got to think he'll continue to develop because he's got a tremendous work ethic. I'll tell you what, it's a huge plus to have him making shots like that. The Pacers handled themselves pretty well against the Eastern Conference last season, 28 and 24. And they seem to be a team on the rise. They've got a lot of young talent. And having made the playoffs last season, they're hoping for more this year. Nice to get into the right. Like it zips. That's good from Bynum. The assist by the Bynum's got five points so far. And for the Pacers last season, finishing four games under 500, but they are ascending ball club as they made the playoffs. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, they're building it the right way, too. And Larry Bird and David Morway putting some pieces together. A nice core group of young, hard-working, talented players. Now you just get some salary cap room there. Perhaps you can add a piece or two to elevate your talent base and your experience level. Being patient, not taking shortcuts. And they're headed in the right direction. Good place to play. Play. Yeah. Here's what Detroit's going with right now. Ben Wallace, he's checked in for Monroe. Prince comes in for Austin Day. Ben Gordon's checked in for Jericho White. Rodney Stuckey's subbed in for Will Bynum. Pacers trail by three. Now let's take a look at it once again with our Spike Slam Camp. Now that's just rubbing it in, fellas. Throwing it down the style. Yeah, these folks are not gonna forget that one anytime soon. Stucky kicks the Prince. Over oh, three. And there's two shot Prince on this. This is the Prince has got 14. with that shot, the in-between shot. Ranger against Gordon. And Granger picks him up defensively. Gordon kicks to Stuck. There's the triple. Another three for the Stuck. Oh, yes, this defense is really struggling right now. Yeah, it's a big differential in points off of threes. And they've got to do a better job of closing out defensively. And Ben Gordon really has been a disappointment for the last couple of seasons for Detroit. Remember, he was 20 points more in Chicago. But uh, that production has really fallen off in the last couple of seasons. The Red Bulls checked in for Charlie going away. And the Pacers making a change here as well. Andre Jones is checked in for Paul George. Here is Collison. Looking for his first bucket of the game. <laughs> Defended by Gordon. That is good. Well, Clark, why do you think Ben Gordon's numbers have fallen so? You know, it's hard to say. It could be a number of factors. One, they don't really have a two-point guard. Stuck to is adequate there, but he's more of a scoring point guard. How is Ben Gordon being used? I mean, what role does he play? How do they get him set up for a shot at the team? For this particular season, I mean, all of that is open to speculation. Now here's Prince. 17 points in the game. That's good. from deep. I think he's done his part to try to keep him in this game. It's been a solid effort from him, guys. No child. That's good. Gordon's got 14 points for the game. He looks like going and going consistently from deep. Steve, I know you love the three ball. And, uh, he's been sharp, kind of like Steve Kerr used to be. 
Allison dishes to Granger. Here's West and blocked. This one's leading by eight. Yurevko, the pass to Gordon. Just five on the clock. Now the feed to Wallace. For Hibbert. Hibbert with the block. Got it off in time. Blocked. Out of for the first half. We'll be right back from Detroit. And it's been a great game out in Detroit. Thanks for joining us for the HP Halftime Report. The Pistons off to a good start. Teams on fire, torching the rims. Just take a look at that field goal percentage. We've seen Tayshawn Prince in top form. How's that for a shooting percentage? 100. Yes, 100% from the court. Not too bad. And slugging it out so far, the Indiana Pacers. Close range shots, their bread and butter early on. A gigantic lead in points in the paint. Danny Granger with a phenomenal first half. What he's been able to do from the field has been nothing short of spectacular. Only a select few players in the league can shoot the ball like that. Some great basketball in today's game from these two. They've carried the scoring load so far. And that just about wraps it up for us here in the studio. Now let's get you back to Kevin and the crew for the second half. second half about to start up and begin any moment. Here's Gordon. Eight point game. Well, you remember these two teams years ago had a pretty healthy rivalry Detroit and Indiana. Last season, it was pretty even. They split four games. Prince and the left are out of the focus. And he's got the out there with Ben Gordon, and it's Wallace with the five, roaming the ring. That's the group for Detroit right now. Granger right side. Guarded now by Tayshawn Prince. Granger. Pistons leading by 10. That's a go from deep. That's another three for Detroit. Now, even though it's kind of just Pistons fan, you hate to see the pace arrive in the playoffs where you're sitting at all. Well, for Detroit, it must have been nice watching them get eliminated early by the Bulls the Pacers did, but they much prefer to be in the playoffs and the team going to be eliminated rather than just watching it, but they're a long way from, I think, being a playoff team based on what the roster looks like right now. Who's the Pacers' biggest fan? Chicago or Detroit? Hard to say. It really is. I mean, you know, going back to successful years of Pacers from the mid 90s to early 2000s. It was both. It was at different times. And this year was the Bulls. And then in that early 2000s period, it was the We know about the Knicks. Yeah, well, that goes back yeah. to the early, early, early exactly. 90s. Yeah, so exactly. I think it, it was probably Detroit most recently. Yes. Here's George. Shot to start the run. And then again. The D was way too soft right there, like Jello. You got to do better than that. He's not the kind of guy you want to get in the way of. No, exactly. And he's a hard man to stop coming down the lane. But you've got to have good position before the play starts. Whatever's needed out there. Hill 
against Ducky. Hill kicks to Granger. Good, it's Hill picking up the assist. Hill's got his eighth assist in the game. Pistons leading by 11. Back to Prince. And stolen by Granger. Goes up. And slam down hard. Another look on the Sprite Slam King. There isn't anybody in the building who just didn't appreciate that throwdown. Well, Steve, that's as fancy a finish as you could possibly get. Yeah, serious degree of difficulty on that one. And a change here for the Pacers. Hansbrough's checked in. The free throw Easy, drops baby. for Granger. You know, you take the Bulls out of the equation, and the Pistons actually had a good year in the Central Division game last year. Got that one. Yeah. Oh, this is scary. You get a score like this, you're in some trouble. Yeah, you can't leave a guy like that on the side. <laughs> 23 points for Danny Granger. So for the Pistons, 7 and 9 in their division. But four of those losses came to Chicago, Steve. They were swept by the Bulls. Not a very strong division, obviously. You know, the Bulls really a good team. Everybody else under 500. So Chicago ran away with that division. Uh, but at least Detroit was competitive with their other division rivals. And here's Gordon from outside. decide to talk it over. Well, one of the reasons the Pacers were able to move forward in that central division is that teams like Milwaukee, Detroit, and Cleveland really struggled last season. Greg Monroe, he's checked in for Detroit. Hynum comes in for Rodney Stuckey. Pistons leading by 10. Now, Bynum. He has five. Prince with it. And now Child out of the best of court. Gordon's got 24. You know, we see the the Pacers in the second division. You know, Chicago really the one down the team from that division. And the Bulls knocked them off in five in the first round. But you know, the Pacers were scrappy against them. They really were. I was extremely pleased and proud how the Pacers competed. Didn't know exactly what to expect having been through somewhat of a disjointed season, but the team came on really strong, showed a lot of life in that series, and they have young talent, maybe not the caliber of MVP, Derrick Rose, but they've got players that are going to be good for a long time. Prince dishes to Wallace, and it's blocked. Pacers trail by 13. Here's Granger. Uses both ends to slam it down. How's that for Finn? Finishing with flavor. Absolutely fantastic. I think he was saving that one for a special occasion. And here is Prince. He's got 25. The baseline jam. Blocked. Out of bounds. They'll keep possession. And some changes here for the Pacers. David West is checked in for Hibbert. Amundsen comes in for Tyler Hansbrough. And James Posey subbed in for Danny Granger. West with the steal. The Pacers able to recover. You can't get too loose with the ball down on the low post. Too easy to steal it. Prince kicks to Wallace. A jump hook. Shot clock in the game. Fires from deep. Gets it to go. Posey's got 10 points. That's the way to do it. Really nice ball movement there. Prince, right side. Again, the Pistons good for two. This is all been about him this quarter. I mean, their lead is safe if he keeps up this kind of play. Shoots the three. That's good. Posey's got six points in the quarter. Always with the ball. 
tipped. This one for three. Incredible shot to beat the buzzer. Boy, that is such a... and throw off their mechanics, but he was textbook perfect. He sure was. Took his time and just a gorgeous last-second release. And a great show through three quarters as we enter the fourth. Who will carry the day? Really an incredible game from Tayshaun Prince. That double-double through the first three quarters, so he is giving them a huge boost. Yeah, a stat sheet stuffer of a performance, Steve, making his presence known across the stat sheet. The Pistons on top. They lead by six. Still getting underway here in the fourth. Let's go down to Doris Burke, who has our Sprite Spark of the Game report. Doris? Well, Kevin, our Spark of the Game in this one, the stretch by the Pistons. Points have been few and far between against this defense, and it's why they keep adding to their lead. They are in complete control as we head to the fourth, guys. Thanks, Doris. Clark, it was a scoring run that proved extremely important. Yeah, Kevin, you know what? I think that's exactly when they grabbed this one by the court. Really seized control of it. And you can building as the game went on and uh, by the end of that run they really took uh, took control of everything and a look at the five for the Pacers to start the fourth quarter we've got West and Lovie is out there with James Posey and there's Collison and it's Jones in the two good what a marvelous job they've done of sharing the basketball a ton of assists well, they know where each other is all the time. They're moving the ball, just finding the open guy. Nobody seems to care who scores. And White gets to the ball. Again, the Pistons get the two. If I must say so, I mean, they are doing a terrific job of moving the ball around. Yeah, much better than their opponents. It seems like every time they score, it's coming off of an assist. From 11 feet away, and Dunleavy gets it to go in. Now they've got to offer more resistance inside. Just too many easy buckets in the paint. Yes, yeah, even that's the top priority for any defense. You've got to protect the paint. Here's Malone. And down in the low post. The Cubs. And the Pistons lead by nine. Here comes Darren Collison. Now Allen defending. And maybe the pass to West. It's a look. And again, it's Indiana converting. And you can see the strategy has been to take the ball inside here. That's where you get a high percentage looks and draw fouls, Steve, but it's a good way to play. Here is Dick. And the row backs in. Lays out. Out of bounds. And they'll keep possession for the Pistons. Ben Wallace, he's checked in for Max Seal. Prince comes in for Austin Day. And Ben Gordon is subbed in for Tariqa White. Then for the Pacers. Roy Hibbert's checked in for Posey. Right Ranger comes in for Mike Dunleavy. And it's George in for Dante Jones. And here's Gordon from outside. Gets the back up. Gordon's got 14 points in the second half. He's wide open for his opponent. You have to locate shooters and get a hand on him. Yeah, we do, Steve. And even if it means having their assigned defender stand at home three-point shooters. I mean, that would be a worthwhile strategy to pursue because you don't want to give good shooters open three. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? Hey, Kevin. During that last break, I heard Frank Vogel addressing his team. He was definitely not pleased. He said, you guys look lethargic out there and told them they've got to increase their activity level. He ended the hall by saying, this is not going to get the job done. I want to see who's going to step up. I tell you what, right now, that mid-range jumper serving them well. Yes, it is, guys. That's six of their last ten points coming from that mid-range area. And stolen by Hibbert. They just haven't been as solid as they were earlier in the game in terms of taking care of the basketball. It's too bad. They're starting to turn the ball over here in the second. No way to mess that one up. Kevin, I mean, he powered it down with 
both feet. Not this guy. He is a superb finish man. He is an absolute force when he gets near the heat. And Gordon over the head. Takes it up. Goes straight through the defender for the dunk. job at the line and that one falls to pick up the end one and stolen by Granger. Well in the second half we've seen them get caught in a few too many times. I mean those miscues are starting to add up. Great awareness by fouling on that layup. Make him earn two points. Yeah I think that's a no-brainer. I mean send him to the line instead of giving up an easy two. He's just so clutch. Here's a guy you want on your side with the game on the line, Kevin. Punches it. And there's two shot points on the assist for Byron. Vince has got 15 points in just the second half. Here's Cranger. And rolls. Great assist by Darren Collison. Just an unbelievable display of offense here today. Well, it seems like every shot that goes up finds its way to the hoop. I mean, every player is sharp and on target. And here's Vince. Cranger knocks it away. Monroe dishes to Bynum. Shot clock at six. Shoot it, shoot it. Backing down is Wallace. Who's back up? Out of bounds. No key possession. A different look for Detroit. Yurepko comes in for Greg Monroe. Rodney Stuckey subbed in for Will Bynum. George Hills checked in for Indiana. Shot clock expires. 24-second violation. Timeout call the Pacers. They're down by six. There's a minute 47 left. In the fourth quarter. A minute 47 left in the fourth quarter of this one. All sorts of time. And there's Darren Collison on the assist by Granger. And now it's just a four-point piston lead. And turnovers, Clark and Steve, have been the issue for him. Yeah, it sure has been the case. I mean, turnovers are like missing breakfast. Eventually, it's going to come back. Why does it always come back to food, Clark? Granger's got 15 points in just the second half. Pistons leading by five. Gordon kicks to Prince. A quarter and a half three for the court. So good. On the run. And he's down that shot. That's tough. And the end of the against the clock right now. Eight point game. And Gordon over the head. Here's Hibbert, and a foul on the shot. They're going to strike for two. Official all over that one. Good call there. You got to give credit to the official there. I mean, being in the right position to make that call, that's what they get paid to do. Good game for Hibbert. He's got eight points and two blocks. Now, even though they're down, I like their mentality. Work it inside and try to create some contact down low. I like it as well. I mean, you just can't assume that you can shoot your way back into it. three-point play that time. Well, they're really making a point of keeping the ball moving around. Yeah, Steve and Kevin, you guys got to love this team. I mean, everybody's involved and engaged. Just the thing that you do, yeah, sure, when all five guys go up, all the rest of the score, it makes it 
so tough on the defense because now you can't look ahead and get out for everybody when the ball's moving so quickly. That's good. You know, that's how you do it, guys. I mean, he passed his way out of the double team and into an easy basket. And that's an intentional foul. This is <laughs> 41 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and they are in the driver's seat. Yep, now a basket here, and that pretty much wraps it up. There's Prince, and the Christians get it, and another bucket right there. And yeah, this part right on its way to victory. Beautiful offensive execution. Yeah, I like the fact that it was wire to wire, too, guys. A fantastic job for them. Boy, that was a nice little finger roll to finish the play. Splendid finish. Good on the first, and that makes it a seven-point lead. Shooter, free throw. Shooter, free throw. Shooter, free throw. Gets them both, and it's an eight-point lead. Timeout called the Pacers. They're losing by eight. There's 25 seconds left in the game. Here's Collison. Pulls from the top of the key. And again, it's Indiana converting. There's 21 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And so they choose to intentionally foul. I know you have to foul, but uh, you don't want to hit a good foul shooter. Like that. That, yeah, you'd much rather have somebody else get to the line than this guy. He's an excellent free throw shooter. He's off that time. Second free throw missing. And it would take divine intervention for them now to get back in. And even that might not be enough. Yeah. What do you think? I don't see it. Very little chance of a comeback. I think this is over. Granger nails it. Well, he's smart. He's getting good shots and he's knocking them down. Now a timeout called by Detroit. They're in front by five. Three seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Gordon up on top. That's the good. And the Pistons lead by seven. And so the Pistons...
Pistons take the win. Both teams played well, but these guys had the edge. Yeah, I think so. They were just steak knife sharp. Very on top of their game here. Well said. And that'll do it for Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Burke. This is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports. And now we present the Jordan player of the game, Tayshaun Prince.
and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video tomorrow night as the MLB Division Series continues and the NFL Week 5 continues. Sunday Night Football is the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Monday Night Football is the New Orleans Saints and the Kansas City Chiefs. And earlier yesterday, as the Atlanta Falcons defeat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in overtime. So we'll see you tomorrow. We'll have another doubleheader of the NBA 2K12. Sign up and peace out. Good night.